everyone and welcome back to Liz Sews. In last week, we finished up the swim top of our bra pattern to swimsuit. But of course, that is not a complete swimsuit. We definitely need something to wear on the bottom. So I'm going to be using my panty draft. If you guys are interested in drafting your own panty based on your measurements, I will link that up in the eye cards right here. So I'm gonna be using the panty block that I made in that video in order to make some swim bottoms for this suit. I'm going to stick with the same sort of fabric themes. We're going to have this, this really fun, colorful print as the main body and the pink binding will be along the waistline and leg hole openings. So let's dive in. Let's start with patterns. The base pattern that I'm starting with is my self-drafted block using my own measurements. Now for panties, normally I like to have three pieces, a gusset, a front, and a back. And in panties, the gusset is lined and the rest of it I leave unlined. For the swimsuit, we definitely wanna line the entire thing. You don't want to have any mishaps when you get into a wet situation and you can see stuff. So definitely wanna line the entire swimsuit. So what I like to do is actually combine the gusset into the front piece. And that's really, really easy because if you're using the method that I'm showing you how to draft panties, the front gusset is a straight line. So you just sort of overlap them at that seam allowance there and just tape it together. And so now you have one large piece, which is your front. And for the tutorial I'm showing you today, we're going to bind the edges with elastic, much in the same way that we did in the upper band of our swim top. So I want to remove all of my seam allowances from the leg hole as well as the waist seam. And that's because we're binding the edges. Another method you could do is like the pair over here. And in this case, I've sewn it similar to the bottom band of our swim top, which is to apply the elastic to the inside of the suit, serge it, and then fold it in again. If you wanted to do that sort of finishing method, you would need to add seam allowances to your leg and waist seams, and you would add the seam allowance equal to the width of your elastic. So if you were using 3 eighths of an inch elastic, I would add 3 eighths of an inch around those two portions. But because I'm gonna do binding, I have removed all of my seam allowances. I do still, however, have my seam allowance at the bottom of the gusset here, that's a quarter of an inch, as well as my side seam gusset, which is also a quarter of an inch. And then this, of course, will be cut on the fold, so you'll have one piece. Once you cut it out, it should look something like this. So obviously this is the front of the, the swimsuit, and it sort of comes around into the back. The gusset will form like this. So the version that I've gone for today is sort of a high-waisted, so this should still come up to my natural waist, but I've increased my leg height here. It'll make it a little bit cheekier in the back, but I think that'll be sort of cute and fun in a bathing suit. So this is the front piece, and I am cutting it out of my fashion fabric here, as well as my lining fabric. Now for lining your suit, you have a couple different options. Uh, ideally, you want your lining fabric to be less stretchy than your fashion fabric. And the reason behind that is if the lining is more stretchy, it could bag and sag outwards. So you don't want your lining peeking out from like below your bum or something like that. So I, what I like to use most often is just the material that's sold as swimsuit lining, which is what this is. It's really, really lightweight. Uh, it does, it dries really fast. It doesn't add a whole lot of bulk to it and it's relatively inexpensive. You also, if you wanted to, could just do two layers of a swim fabric like this. However, I find swim fabrics tend to be a little bit on the pricier side. Um, these are ranging like maybe 15, 10, 15, $20 a yard. So, I mean, it gets really expensive if you're gonna line it with your uh, lycra as well. So I, I tend to go for this because it's a little bit more economical. I don't really care what the inside looks like. So I'm using just swim lining and in black in this case. Uh, even if you use it in nude, it still helps keep things covered when you get wet. So that is the front piece. And then we also have another piece, which is our back piece. And this is just the same back piece that I have for my underwear draft. Um, cut on the fold here, 
Just like on the front, we have a quarter of an inch seam allowance at the side seam as well as the gusset seam. And then everywhere else I have removed my seam allowances. So I removed the seam allowances around the bum as well as the waistline here. Um, and because I went with a little higher cheekier of a style, right, I shortened, I shortened this distance right here to bring up the leg. That meant I also had to shorten my distance in the back as well. So whatever the side seam is over here, it has to match in the back over here. So keep that in mind. Uh, you don't want to cut up too high and then you end up having no bum coverage whatsoever. Unless you're into that sort of thing. So if we take a look at the back piece, this is what my, my back piece looks like all cut out. Uh, pretty self-explanatory, like I said, cut on the fold. And again, I cut that out in the fashion fabric and in my swimwear lining. So you just have a back and a front with this, nothing else. You don't have a separate gusset piece. And then the last thing that I'm going to cut out, obviously, is my bindings. So I am going to use a contrasting pink binding, just like we did on the swim top. And I've cut it for my waist as well as my two leg hole openings. So I've cut my binding to be, I think this is one and a half inches. Um, at a minimum, the width needs to be 3x the width of your elastic. So I'm using 3 8 of an inch elastic. And I wanted to make sure that I had enough to cover that elastic fully and have a little bit left over. So 3x the width of your elastic, and that's what you need for bindings. So that is the pattern and the material. So let's get into construction. So now we can start looking at the construction of this. And it's actually really, really simple. I think because the gusset, the third gusset piece is missing, I find the construction of the swim bottoms even easier than normal. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my fashion fabric, I'm gonna have it sitting wrong side up. Uh, this is my back. And I'm also gonna take my lining and overlay on top of here. Of course, anyone who's been following me for any amount of time knows that my favorite finishing method is the stitch and flip. And so of course I'm gonna do that over here as well. So once I have my lining and my fashion fabric aligned, I'm just going to pin those two sides into place really quickly. So the next step is going to be taking the second layer of lining. So I want my lining touching lining and I always want my, my fashion touching fashion. So I'm gonna take my second layer of lining and this is going to be the front of my panties. I know it's a little bit hard to see black on black, but of course it'll look, you'll see it again on the other side as well and be a little bit easier to see. So just going to lay that on there. Now with this swim lining fabric, I don't find that there is a right and wrong side, but certainly um, if you can tell there's a right and wrong side and you, there's definitely a side that you want against your skin, you want the, the skin sides touching each other. So the right side and right side touching each other. Um, but with this fabric, I'm not noticing any difference that would require me to, to pay attention to that. So once I have the lining on there, I just flip this over to the other side and I can put my fashion fabric on and the same deal. You want the right side touching the right side. So what this should be is a sandwich and the bread of your sandwich is your two uh, front pieces and the meat of the sandwich will be your bum pieces. And whenever you're doing stitch and flip, the other thing you wanna keep an eye out for and make sure that you've done it correctly is that you have like fabric, touching like fabric. So you have both of your linings together and then both of your fashion fabrics together. So now that that's all pinned into place, I'm gonna take this over to the machine. I'm gonna be using a zigzag stitch and add a quarter of an inch because that was the seam allowance that I put in. I'm just gonna do down both of these sides here and I'll come back to you.
And once we have it sewn up, this is what it looks like. Uh, so on this side here, I've used a zigzag stitch. I was having a lot of problems with skipped stitches. So I switched over to a different stitch on this side of the panty. Uh, this one is, it's stitch number three on my Bernina 350 that I'll pop up a picture over here of what it looks like. But basically it's a straight stitch and then a zigzag and a straight and then a zigzag. And sometimes I use this on swimwear because it still has a lot of stretch like that, but it also tends to work a little bit better on my machine and it makes a nice consistent seam on the outside of, of the garment. So if you're ever having trouble with the next stitch, maybe try that stitch, see if you have it on your machine. So those are your two side stitches. Uh, now we can just flip this out and we have close to the finished pair of bottoms. So the side is completely done like this and you can see that all of the seams are going to be encased inside, uh, no, no exposed seam allowances. So that's one of the reasons why I like finishing it in this way. And if you want, you can top stitch down here. I tend to not like the look of top stitching uh, specifically for this, so I just don't bother even doing it at all. So now we can do the gusset. And this one does take a little bit of thinking about it. So what we're going to do is we want to do, um, I'm just looking at the two back pieces, the two bum pieces of this. And the first thing I want to do is align my lining to it. So I want to have lining touching lining. And I'm just going to pin this into place. Okay, so the lining is now pinned into place. Now remember when we did our side seams, I said the thing that you want to keep in mind is you want lining and lining together and fashion fabric and fashion fabric together. So obviously if I put this on top of here, that's not going to give me what I want. So what I need to do is flip it over to the other side. I'm actually going to pull my gusset around and over like this. So I do have the right side of my gusset take, touching the right side of my bottom. And now I can pin this guy into place on the back. And now I can take this over to the machine and sew this up. And here is what the seam looks like once you've done that. And we can just make everything right sides out again. And now you can start seeing that how it's really coming together. So these side seams are completely encased, no raw seam allowances. Same with this gusset seam in the back. So no, no exposed seam allowances. Everything's looking nice and neat and tidy. So that beginning step of constructing the fabric portion is the same no matter how you want to do your underwear or your, your swim bottoms. So this step of finishing the legs and the waist is where it sort of differs for me. So in, in this pair here, you can see that I've just used one fabric on the outside and then of course I have this nude lining on the inside. And what I've done is when I got to this step in the construction, I took my, my elastic and I started applying it to the fabrics like this. Um, and I zigzagged it all around the leg holes and the waist from the inside of the garment. And then once you've done that, you can serge it or not, and then fold it around to the inside and zigzag it again. And that's how you get this finish over here. So if you wanted to do the finish where the elastic is just completely encased in the exterior fabric, and it would look like this, so it has sort of like a seamless look to it even though yes you can still see the zigzag stitches along those edges um, you just need to have the seam allowance of your elastic added to your your pattern piece for this one i am going to do the bound edge uh, just so that i can start bringing in some of these really fun pink colors so what i'm going to do you can baste these two fabrics together because they do get quite slippery, but I think all I'm gonna do is just pin baste them. So I'm gonna go ahead and pin baste around the waist and I'll come back to you. So now I've pin basted all around my waistline here. Uh, next, I wanna take my binding fabric and I want the right side of my binding fabric touching the right side of my fashion fabric. Uh, I am going to start my loop over at a side seam here it's not particularly pretty, but um, it's never really bothered me. So I am going to pin this one into place as well, just because I'm dealing with so many layers. 
I want to make sure that nothing is moving around. Certainly, as you get more advanced with this, you could probably do it without pinning. I just don't trust myself yet to, to keep three layers of fabric and elastic all in place at once. I actually have quite a bit of excess here, so I think what I'm going to do is a little bit nicer of a finish um, when finishing in the round, and that is I'm going to eyeball where I think that these two are going to meet, these two ends of the fabric will meet, and I'm gonna go ahead and straight stitch that into place so that I have a complete circle to go around to my waistline. Then I don't have to worry about cleaning up any like raw edges down the road as I'm finishing it. Okay, I've just gone and ahead and done a straight stitch on here, which does remind me I need to switch out my thread for something that matches my binding a little bit better. Uh, so now that I've done a straight stitch on there, I can get rid of my excess. And this will mean that when it's bound up and around, it, it'll have a much cleaner finish on the outside. You can totally do this as well when you're making underwear with fold over elastic. I just generally find that I'm not interested in doing something that fiddly. But since swimwear is, is meant to be seen, I think it's worth it doing on this. So now that we have the waistband binding on, the last thing of course we need is our elastic itself. So when I'm applying the elastic on top of here, I'm gonna butt up the edge of the elastic with the edge of my swimwear project. And I am gonna to wanna to put a little bit of tension on here. I'm talking like maybe 10, 15%, something like that around the waistline. When we are doing the legs, the legs are done in the exact same manner, but I do like to stretch a little bit extra around the bum. That way it helps to curve around the body a little bit better. So when I'm doing the bum, I kind of stretch pretty vigorously because this is an area of the body where it definitely needs to cup and curve. <clears throat> so on, I'll, 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 I'll do my little 10, 15% stretch all the way around here. When I get to that gusset seam line, I will start stretching a little bit extra uh, from the gusset seam line to the side seam line up here. So I'm gonna switch you guys over to my machine so you can see what it looks like as I'm applying the elastic to the waistband. Okay, all set up in the machine. I have switched over to my matching thread uh, and I do like to just apply the elastic. I'm going to get my needle out of there and then sink it down. I'm gonna be using a zigzag stitch for this and like I said, just pulling slightly. I'm gonna do a couple of stitches first so that I can anchor it before I start pulling my elastic. Okay, so now that we are anchored into place, I can start sewing along, pulling my elastic, making sure I'm sort of staying close to the edge of my project. Now that I've gotten to the end of my elastic, I can just overlap it maybe like a centimeter. Uh, this is all gonna be covered up with the binding, so it doesn't matter if it's pretty. And just cut off your extra elastic. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue to do that for all three edges, so the waist and the two leg seams. So now I've gone ahead and applied the elastic in the binding around the waist and the leg hole edges. Um, so just to note here, the stretching that we're doing along most of the part is not to sort of gather anything up, but rather to just counteract any stretching you may be experiencing with your feed dogs. So Beverly Johnson just shows it like showing the elastic who's boss. So you really, you're not doing a, an extreme amount of stretch up here. The only place where you should see gathering once you're done is here around the bum. And you can see on my piece here, uh, right around the bum, we do have just a little bit of gathering as it's squinching up with that elastic. And that is exactly what we want to see so that it sort of cups around the body a little bit easier. So now that we have the first pass done, we can go ahead to the second pass. So just like we did with the bra, for the binding around all of these edges, we want to flip the binding up. Uh, this elastic gives us a nice clean edge. And then of course, flip the binding to the back. So it looks like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and pin this all into place.
Now I'm just going to go ahead and repeat that for my other leg holes and my suit will be finished. Here we have the finished swim bottoms. Of course, the last thing left to do is just clean up this excess material. So I'm just probably going to go in with the scissors and clean this off from the inside so I have a little bit cleaner of a finish and these guys will be done. This concludes the final installment in my bra pattern to swimsuit series. Hopefully by now you have a finished swimsuit that you can't wait to wear to the beach or the pool or even your backyard. I'd love to see the things you've made. Be sure to tag me on Instagram at Liz underscore sews or hashtag Liz sews so that I can see all of your beautiful makes. See you next time. Take care. Mm -hmm.